If you're watching this and you live in North America, the EU, Australia, many parts of the world, the developed nations, then you are lucky for the reason that your currencies hold up well compared to others, and it is relatively easy to get banks, loans, mortgages, credit cards, these financial services. And a lot of times you don't have to even consider your, these things. You're just born into it and just uh, have to basically ask to participate. If you are born in the rest of the world, the majority of the world, basically 6 billion people of the world, you are born into the de what is known as the developing world or third or second um, world countries. And a lot of these places and a lot of these people, maybe you're watching this and I mean, maybe you struggle to get a bank account or get a loan. Not having the access to financial instruments like that make it hard to compete and live in this global world that we're in. So Bitcoin can offer you a way out of the secluded world that you might exist in and enter you into the global world, into the world of financial ability. So here are three really simple reasons why you might want to be in Bitcoin and you might want to be studying and holding Bitcoin if you are living in a developed world. Now, the first one is really simple. It allows you to hold your money in a secure way. Bitcoin is a digital cash. It is like the cash in your wallet. That is a physical cash, but it is a digital version of that. You can transact with it peer to peer, just as you can with physical cash, and you can trade it basically among merchants that accept it. And merchants are just people when it really comes down to it, the right people control what a merchant accepts. And the benefit of it compared to cash, there are many of them, but one of them is that it is secure, that it can be secured in a way where others cannot steal it. If you have physical dollars in your wallet, there is no, there's not even any physical protection except you carrying it on you. If you leave that wallet somewhere and it is accessible by somebody, there is no pin they need to put in, there is no key they need to have to be able to access your cash in your wallet. When you hold your Bitcoin on a wallet, even if it's a wallet on your phone, not, maybe not even a hardware wallet, you have the ability to protect it with biometrics through a fingerprint on your phone or through a two-factor authentication by getting a text message or by using a Google Authenticator app. And you are able to have PIN numbers and passcodes to be able to access your wallets. And that allows you to protect your physical asset. And, you know, we call Bitcoin digital, but the digital world is physical. It is consists of electrons, it consists of databases and transmission lines, it, it consists of devices. And all of those things are physical, we just think about it as if it's not. So it's a bearer instrument, and it allows you to actually hold your value and it allows you to secure that value. Now, the second one is very, very easy to understand. And it is that inflation can run rampant on currency, because it is something that you don't control. The government decides, or the central bank, which is deeply connected to the government, even if it pretends to be a private institute, it has the government's interest in sort of in its in its mind and it decides what the interest rates are it decides what other organizations to bail out it decides when it wants to hold money when it wants to give money and basically the people closest to that benefit the most they benefit the most because they gain access to money before it enters circulation or, or the, the first people to access it before it enters circulation. So the market hasn't adjusted to the increase in supply. So they're able to take that, they're able to buy goods at the previous price of that good 
to the cost of the currency. Now, Bitcoin operates as programmed money. And by programmed, I don't mean like a CBDC. I mean that it is issued by the program or by the code that it is built on. It is issued 3.25 Bitcoin per block. Each block gets issued or gets um, created basically every 10 minutes or so. And there is a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin ever to be created. But it is infinitely or almost infinitely divisible down. It's divisible down to the 100 millionth decimal place. And these are called Satoshis. So you can still transact with it, even in an area where basically, you know, one Bitcoin would be a lot of money, which it is a lot of money for one Bitcoin, even anywhere you are in the world. But in some areas, there might be, you know, the living expenses in your local currency would be really low. So by being able to break Bitcoin down to that decimal point, point you're able to transact with it in these small amounts as well. So that second point to sum it up, to make it clear, is it protects you against inflation. Now you do have to be okay with the volatility of this asset. And the reason it's volatile, if you look into it, is because of the size of it. And because there are people that take advantage of leverage within the system of people, you know, basically betting and borrowing to bet up the price or down the price, and people with lots of money can come in and see where those people basically will get margin called, and they can drive the price to that, and they can scoop up the money and buy the Bitcoin basically at a lower price, and they can sell the Bitcoin at a higher price. So there is manipulation as there is in any market, but there is no manipulation in the other part of the market. So there's manipulation in stocks, in real estate, in bonds, in every asset um, in that same way of people being able to kind of drive prices up and down based on being like a whale. But then there's manipulation on the side of stock issuance, of bond issuance, and of money creation. Now, you don't get affected by any of those in a negative way when you're dealing with Bitcoin because it's programmed into it that the issuance is fixed and the total supply is fixed. Now, some resources that I would look into... Um, Kenya, the country of Kenya, there is an app there called Tondo. And in Kenya, a lot of people pay with M-Pesa, which is M-P-E-S-A. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that's how you spell it. And basically, this app allows you to pay somebody in that same protocol using your phone, M-Pesa or whatever, uh, is like a, you, you take down somebody's number and you can send them money basically directly that way and you can hold money on your phone. You can hold Ken, Ken, Kenyan shillings. Now, Tondo, you can hold Bitcoin and the Tondo app will pay them in Kenyan shillings and you, and you transmit that money, that Bitcoin, to, through Tondo. So it allows you to live on Bitcoin incredibly easy in Kenya, that app. Now, you need to look around in whatever country that you're in to see if there's something like that app. If your money is being inflated away, and in most developing nations, the currency is really bad because it's compared to a currency that is better than it, typically the US dollar, which is inflating at a lesser extent, but it is still a terrible currency. So Bitcoin, it doesn't only just save you from inflation, but it allows you to save. And you can do this because it can be broken down into these decimal points. You can do this at almost any level. Of course, you have to be beyond just survival, just making ends meet day by day. But as soon as you do that, you are able to save in Bitcoin. And if you're able to save and, and, and ride through any amount of volatility, you will save and your the creation of money or your if when you have to basically convert that back to your nation's currency you will have actually 
you'll you'll actually be able to do so for more because it'll be worth more in your in your currency and that can be because it's a global asset that is growing and it can be because your nation's currency is being inflated away so it can be a savings account for you which is an incredibly beautiful thing so it's a bank in the way that you are able to secure it yourself you're able to transact with it and you do not need permission to do so so in all of that it becomes a bank account for people who are incredibly disenfranchised when it comes to financial services this allows them to be their own bank and it's not that difficult and in that there can be services that do not discriminate based on your location um, you may be able to get a service like Ledin, L-E-D-N, which allows you to borrow against your Bitcoin. Um, maybe that's something you need to do. You need to find a way to get loans for some activity that you deem as productive. And you are not able to do that because you are not able to get a bank account. So this allows you to sidestep that and enter into this completely different financial institution ecosystem. It's not even an institution, it's just a financial ecosystem that is Bitcoin. Now, the third reason, and I'm sure there are many other ones, but this one I will just get into quickly because it is so dead simple why the developing nation needs Bitcoin, which is remittances. Now, the idea of a remittance is working somewhere and sending money back home. So if you're to be able to temporarily or permanently move somewhere and, and support some other family members with a stronger currency, with a stronger wage, and they're able to take that money and buy things locally where they are, that's great. Now, that works great, even just as is. The part that doesn't work great, of course, is that they're, they're converting that back into a weaker currency that will get inflated away, as I previously stated. But beyond that is the predatory companies that take up to 30% off the top of these remittances. You send $100, that family member might only receive 70. That should be criminal. With Bitcoin, you send 1,000 Satoshis, they're going to get 990. You know, there might be just a little bit of minor fees. But that is an incredible difference. Incredible difference. And that is powerful. You can do it over the Lightning Network even and, you know, lower the fees even more. You could do it over the main chain. And depending on how many transactions are in the main chain, it might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit less. But it is not going to be 30% of your remittance. So if you could combine these, you know, People in Kenya, um, if they are sending money back to Kenya, you know, if they're, if they're working out in, in another country and that that member could use something like that app that I, that I talked about, ta uh, Tonda, they could live off of the Bitcoin standard and the Bitcoin could appreciate compared to their nation's currency and they could be getting a lot more of the value because they don't have to deal with uh, a remittance financial uh, service. So those are three big reasons. Like I said, there are many, many more, and I will get into those in other podcasts. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. My name is Forrest Stevens. This is Taking Back Crypto. And before I let you go, I want to tell you about this film that I'm making. I'm a filmmaker by trade. That is my business. This is just something I do on the side in hopes to help educate people about Bitcoin, which is something I'm passionate about. And I'm kind of tying those two things together in this next thing that I'm doing, which is one of my next films I'm working on, which is called The Land of Volcanoes and Bitcoin. And it is a documentary about El Salvador, which has embraced Bitcoin as legal tender, as one of its two currencies in the nation and it has adopted personally a bitcoin uh, strategic reserve and has started mining bitcoin and it has done this for three years and it has drastically changed this little nation 
into something meaningful. That and a combination of other things have just drastically changed this country. So I'm doing a full documentary about what Bitcoin has done to the nation of El Salvador and what El Salvador is in our current moment in history. Now, if you want to support that, you can do so. I have a crowdfunding page on Geyser, which is a Bitcoin-only crowdfunding platform. And you sign up on there, you can send uh, me some Bitcoin over Lightning Network, and you can get some of the different rewards that are on my crowdfunding page. And you can support me making this amazing film. So thank you all for watching and listening, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.